World Biodiversity Day with the theme, Our Solution, Our Nature. I am Babaji Diagbola, a conservation ecologist and a veterinary doctor by training. I'll be talking to you on role of wildlife in economic development and environmental protection. Now, before we start, I'll define some terms. Economic development is the process by which a nation improves the economic potential, economic, political, and social well-being of its people. Environmental protection is a practice of protecting the natural environment by individual, organization, and government for the benefit of both the environment and human. Now, um, wildlife traditionally refers to undomesticated animal species, but has come to include all plants, fungi, and organisms that grow or live wild in an area without being introduced by humans. Now, I'll be talking about the past, present, future, and um, the far future of the importance of protecting our environment. It's said that um, a photograph speaks volume. Now, this photograph here, place one, shows you how important a tree is. Look at the number of sheep taking shelter under it. So imagine if we take out just this one tree, how many animals will be affected? Now, when modern theory of economic development first began to develop in as far back as 1950s and the 60s, Natural resources and the environment essentially were absent. It was assumed that economic output flow and rates of output growth are dependent on the application of service provided by capital and labor. Now, this was a misconception because um, economists thought that if you do away with environmental factors, just pump in money or improve your labor, the output will be, you know, improved but in the late 1960s awareness of the environmental and natural resource as a determining factor affecting growth became more widely appreciated attention on the interface between natural and economic world initially came from natural resources and environmental economists interested in problems of limits to growth so when research went into the processes, they found out that um, the environment played a lot of role in outputs. So telling you that just 1960 was when the awareness about environmental factors into economics started. Now, this um, diagram here shows you the interrelationship between economic development, wildlife, and environmental protection. It shows that they are interrelated, and um, if you do away with one, it affects the other. So, our policymakers must be aware of such things, and um, we ourselves must be, so that we can make necessary adjustments to how we manage our wildlife and our environment. Now, um, I would like us to note at this point that growth is a fundamental. It, growth is fundamentally a process of investing in various forms of society by society. And the rates and quality of growth depend on the size and composition of our investment. So you put in less, you get less. You put in more, you get more. So if you invest in environmental factors, uh, I mean, environmental protection, you definitely get more. Now, economic output is sustained and enhanced over time through the maintenance and enhancement of various environmental service flow and thoughts and through the effective protection and management of natural resource stock, as well as through the augmentation of natural resource extraction and final production capacity. Now, therefore, investment in the maintenance of natural capital services is one of the important pathways of achieving sustainable growth. Efficient 
problems in the allocation of natural capital resources arise between the um, externalities that are familiar to natural resource and environmental economics. If a scarce natural resource is nevertheless freely available for the taking, that's free for all, it will be overexploited. An incentive to invest in better protection and management will be lacking. That is what we are facing in the country nowadays because hunters have a field day just going into the forest to hunt and um, uh, loggers just go anywhere with their chainsaw and cut trees. So because it is now a free for all, nobody wants to invest in environmental protection. When I say nobody, I mean external forces, international donor agencies, and even some of the NGOs in the country, because it's a free for all. So the incentive to protect or invest in park management, in forest management is lacking. Now, present state of our wildlife management, um, the major threats to wildlife in Nigeria are loss of habitat, overhunting, as I explained, and then poaching. Wildlife habitat is being destroyed by logging, farming, exploitation for fuel wood, illegal grazing inside wildlife reserve, industrial plantation of exotic trees, housing, and um, highway development. A classical example of this can be seen in Bobo Plain in Abuja. The whole area uh, is quite large, and it was designated as a protected area, gazetted. But now, if you get there, you have the whole place being crisscrossed by highway, and um, some developers have started building estates in it. This is supposed to be a gazetted protected area. So one of the major problems. And then you have situations where um, herdsmen just enter into protected areas because they see that the grass is uh, lush, being a protected area, to graze their cattle. And then you have people just going into the forests, cutting wood to make charcoal for sale. So if care is not taken, all these things will be lost and um, will be a, to blame for it. Now, um, present state of wildlife, Hunting is a traditional occupation in Nigeria. And because of the high demand for bushmeat, trophies, and animal parts for ingredients of medical and magical concussion, hunters are as, assumed, assured of a lucrative market. If you go into any of our um, reserves, you see people taking out all manner of wildlife. That is in the poorly managed ones. You see, Tortoise going out, pangolins going out, snails, and um, in some places, uh, I remember there was a time a poacher was arrested in Omar Forest. He had um, a contract to supply elephant tusks, and whoever wanted the elephant tusk had paid him over 25,000 naira, which to him was a lot of money. So, this kind of situation will not definitely go well for our wildlife conservation. Now, we have forest reserve, free areas, conservation areas. In Nigeria, the conservation areas include national parks, game and wildlife sanctuaries, sanctuaries, proposed game reserves, wildlife sanctuaries, and strict nature reserve. Now, at present, the level of deforestation puts Nigeria at a forest cover of less than 5% while the international standard is 25%. Now, some of these um, issues, as you see them, they appear as if they are very mild. But compare 5% to 25%. That's a long way, 20% off. So, and to recover from that 20%, a lot of effort has to be put into reforestation, not afforest reforestation. Um, manning our already protected wildlife areas, our forest reserves, our game reserves, and even our national parks. Now, here's a list of some of the national parks we have in Nigeria, with the exception of Yankari, which is now uh, a wildlife reserve because it has been taken over by the state, by the Bauchi state government. 
we have Yankari, Oldoyo, Okomu, Kamoku, Kenji, Gashaka, Gumti, Cross River, and then Chad Basin National Parks. Now, um, if you see, they were established as far back as, that's in case of Yankari, 1962. And um, the recent one is uh, 1999, which is uh, Okomu and uh, Kamoku. And then you have the area covered by each of the protected areas and um, the states where they are found. Now, apart from national parks, other conservation areas include Grim Reserve, wildlife sanctuaries, and strict nature parks, strict nature reserves. The categories of conservation areas are managed mainly by wildlife section of the state's forest department, as SFDS. However, foreign organizations and non-governmental organizations are very active in the management of strict uh, nature reserves. Um, we have the Elephant Sanctuary in um, Omo Forest, which is um, being managed um, by NCF, Nigerian Conservation Foundation, in collaboration with uh, Penton Zoo in the UK. And um, you have some other projects in Nigeria where Nigerian uh, NCF and then the um, private conservation, like the, um, there's this uh, sanctuary drill sanctuary in somewhere in Cross River States, being managed by a private individual. So, and then we have FRIN, Forest, um, Forest uh, Research Institute of Nigeria, managing some of the um, street nature reserves. And um, they are doing a good job, but more needs to be done. Now, Nigeria is losing its forest cover at an alarming rate. As you know, the sustainable environment is, as, is critical to achieving achievement of the sustainable development goal, that is goal 15, which is uh, specific about protecting, restoring, and promoting suitable use of terrestrial ecosystem. And then it has included the um, uh, aquatic ecosystem as well. Sustainable managing of forest, combating the certification, and halting and reversing land degradation, as well as halting biodiversity loss. Now, for me, that is quoting Amina Mohammed when she was Minister of Environment. She said, for me, protecting the environment is sacrosanct. As Minister, one of my first acts was to tackle illegal logging, which she did very well. What I found on ground was alarming. So what has changed? Now, the future. The environment is shouting, help, help. We have a... Uh, Indiscriminate uh, hunting, which is uh, killing our wildlife. We have our wives having to suffer to go long distance with children on their, with the child on their back to fetch well wood because we've taken out all the um, major trees around our habitation, which is now inviting the certification. And then you have climate change, which is doing a lot of destruction. We have uh, flooding heat waves, and um, delayed rain. And um, this is painting a very gloom picture of the future. Now, the concept of wildlife management is entrenched in three approaches. Control of wildlife population, maintenance of wildlife habitats, management of people to protect wildlife. Now, to achieve human management that strikes, a, to achieve human management that strikes a balance between the needs of man and the requirements of wildlife species, the promulgation and enforcement of adequate and effective legislation is needed. This brings me to NESRIA, that is National Environmental Standards and Regulation Enforcement Agency, which is supposed to be the regulatory agency. Um, NESRIA has a responsibility for protection and development of environmental biodiversity conservation and sustainable development of Nigeria's natural resources in general, and environmental technology, including coordination and liaison with relevant stakeholders within and outside Nigeria on matters of enforcement of environmental standard regulation, rules, laws, policies, and guidelines. Now, this is a very, very tall order, but um, I'll tell you categorically that, um, yes, the law is there, but NESRIA will only function if you are involved in international trade. 
which brings me to one of the requirements of the states. They are supposed to domesticate these laws so that those arrested with probably uh, contraband, uh, illegal um, wildlife can be prosecuted. Because if you look at the laws on ground in most states, except for Ogun State, which has um, uh, at present trying to upgrade their law, and then in um, Cross River, uh, it's just a slap on the wrist if you are caught with pangolin or elephant tusk. So these are some of the things that have to be done to help our wildlife protection in the country. Now, why do we have to protect our wildlife? Simply put, as highlighted, they provide us with economic services. That's uh, ecosystem services. Now, what do we mean by ecosystem services? Um, you see the protection of our coastlines, um, the water circle, that's uh, filtration of water. Um, I'll give you a classical example. Pollination by bee. Um, some people tried to do pollination by hand and um, it was not a funny issue. So ordinary, the insect that are pollinating our crops, it's a very service. And um, if we lose this, a lot of things will be lost. And take, for example, the uh, mangrove forests in our coastal areas. This help protect um, tidal waves from coming in and um, destroying our habitation. So, and in places where they've tried to mimic the work of the mangrove forests, it has not been easy because the costs has been so enormous. Now, but you and I know that all is not well. Yeah, because from this um, uh, plate here, you can see a classical example of um, bush meat on display for sale by women and youths by highway entering major urban areas and cities in Nigeria. Uh, that's Sibet Cat, that's uh, Doika. And um, yes, because of lack of regulation, people hunt all year round, not allowing these animals to breed. Well, this is wrong. There should be strict restriction on when people are allowed, allowed to hunt, when people are uh, allowed to log. This will allow this uh, wildlife to um, reproduce and then replenish the stock. Now, here is um, a photograph of um, some poachers caught after they had uh, killed a roan antelope in Yankari Game Reserve. Um, here is another one of community members somewhere in Endo State after they killed a young male elephant. Uh, accusing it for invading their cocoa farm. Now, here's a photograph of my forests. You can see the trees there are, are all dead. This is what cocoa farmers do. This is a classic, this is um, uh, a prime chimpanzee habitat that has been destroyed because farmers wanted to plant cocoa and um, they've destroyed all the trees. And I don't see any chimpanzee coming into, into this area. They will plant banana and then they will plant cocoa. So this should not be allowed. And here is um, pangolin openly on display in our markets, showing you that um, the enforcement of our conservation law is not helping masters. Now, as far back as 1961, during the Arusha Declaration, Julius Nyerere said, the survival of our wildlife is a matter of grave concern to all of us in Africa. These wild creatures amid the wild places they inhabit are not only important as a source of wonder and inspiration, but are an integral part of our natural resource and of our future livelihood and well-being. Well said. Many people derive values from biodiversity through leisure activities such as hiking, bird watching, nature, history study, biodiversity inspired music, uh, printers, sculptors, writers, and other artists. If you get to Osho Shobo, you see a lot of the um, sculptures there are based on inspiration from nature. Many cultural groups view themselves as an integral part of the natural world and show respect for other living organisms. The absence of any organism will rob people of such joy and inspiration. 
I usually use this classical example of the best um, traditional dancing troupe in the world, the Asharowa International. Their leg steps mimic that of the clip springer, Gadandusi, as it's called in our house. And um, without this animal, that dance step won't be, and such a dance troupe won't be the best in the world. So we derive a lot of benefits from biodiversity. Now, to get it right, we have to introduce conservation education into Nigerian school curricula, uh, manpower development and capacity building, promote research into wildlife conservation, promote community participation in conservation, provision of alternative sort of livelihood, updating and enforcement of conservation laws, and then introduction of well-managed protected areas, which will incorporate local conservation knowledge and modern ICT techniques. Now here is um, a clip from, a photograph from WCS of um, some of their facilitators teaching school children about the environment and it's being done right in Cross River National Park. So this youth or this kid will grow up to be very good conservationists and then protect the environment better. A good basic education is as essential to people's need as clean air and water. But without it, individuals are robbed of their ability to make sound choice for their future and prosperity. Now, promoting research into cons wildlife conservation as training institutions across the country should strengthen their links with international conservation uh, organizations to provide opportunities for student internship and volunteer programs. Now, here, manpower development, you see um, one of the um, top professors in uh, wildlife conservation in Nigeria, Professor Ayodili and his colleague, you know, impacting on the young uh, junior colleagues. These were, these were master students in the University of Ibadan some time ago. These are some of the things that we need to work on. Have such students have scholarships to do, you know, reasonable projects that uh, will impact positively on conservation. Promoting community participation in conservation, that's encouraging local participation in protected area management activities by supporting community conservation programs as well as promoting representation of rural communities in monitoring of existing wildlife conservation program. This is um, one of the things WCS is doing in Cross River National Park with the, the gorilla uh, conservation, that is uh, the Cross River Gorilla, and they are doing a good job of it. If this is extended to other protected areas in the country, a lot will be done to at least get positive results. Um, you can see this too in uh, a plurry where AP Leventis is sponsoring community participation in uh, the training of uh, conservationists, and um, it's yielding positive results. Now, Provision of alternative source of livelihood and capacity building. It is said that one of the greatest problems to environment is poverty because the struggle for survival often forces the poor to destroy resources that they will need in the future. So to do this, um, ERCI, Environmental Resource Conservation Initiative, um, trained uh, people in uh, the area of Sherry Hills in peak production and pork processing. Because the reason why they say they hunt is to get protein, meat. So with pig production, they will have to definitely go, in, go, more into, uh, go less into the um, forest to hunt. And then you can introduce a uh, cane rat production, deep and uh, beekeeping and honey proce processing, which are very good source of livelihood and um, alternative to illegal poaching of wildlife. Now, you can have youths being trained as uh, ecotour guides. Here you have uh, hikers and campers in Omo Forest. So as ecotour guide, it gives them um, work to do. And um, you have situation where you can introduce uh, wildlife photography. Because all these things are very good source of income, which will definitely augment source of livelihood and then um, protect the wildlife. Now, here you see um, a well-motivated uh, ranger force. This is in Yankari Game Reserve, courtesy the Wild Conservation Society. And um, when 
the ranger is well trained. He takes um, positive, positive decisions about how to protect and um, carry out conservation uh, education. Now, this is an um, observatory and security tower which can be deployed. Um, it's such that uh, it's powered by solar. You can have a CB radio and then you have internet access. So you can have researchers taking um, uh, observation of wildlife and then you have um, park rangers using the place as a ranger post. Now the future, mm, bleak, right? Leadership and political will is key in setting the stage for engaging in the implementation of environmental protection, which will enhance economic development. This will need, this will need to be accompanied by strong institutional governance and capacity to deliver. Underpinning this will require partnership across all levels of government in the country, region, and internationally. New ways of doing business, mindset change will be needed to address the scale of the challenge, of the challenges, many of which go beyond the borders of countries to regions. Now, in conclusion, man cannot divorce himself from nature. Hence, when man is fully aware and appreciate things around him, the tendency for continuity is high for both man and living things. Looking at the society, nature, and life in a spectrum, one will discover the survival of man actually depends on a, a cordial interrelationship between him and his environment. That is, having an understanding of the situations of things around him, trees, stone, stand, sand, sound, etc. The ideal or perfect world in harmony reveals a state of cordial, perfect, and peaceful coexistence between man and his environment. Thanks for listening. They can't protect themselves, but together we can. Thank you very much.